Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Um, today I wanted to tackle the issue of gluing up uh, panels and some of the difficulties that we find when we're doing that. I've got just a sample here, the parts aren't actually glued or anything, um, but this is kind of just an example of some of the things that go into gluing up a panel. Um, first of all, you put the glue on the edges of your boards <clears throat> and you lay them in your clamps that you have all ready and set to go and, and then you tighten the clamps down onto the boards and um, you want to make sure you put some other clamps on the top to even out the clamping pressure and then maybe to help yourself uh, keep the, the whole panel flat you might add some calls with some clamps on those calls to kind of hold everything flat and um, you know this is a, an effective way and it's a kind of a tried and true method of clamping up your panels um, but um, one thing that I notice is that first of all it uses a lot of different components and there's a lot of steps which can take up time and all that time that you are fiddling with clamps and calls and things your glue is setting up <clears throat> and then another um, issue is just how crowded the uh, space becomes with so many different clamps and calls and things and the, they start to get in the way of each other and so anyway I thought maybe there would be a better way and those of you that follow my channel know that I have uh, replaced using wood calls with using Unistrip and for quite some time I've been thinking of a way to integrate all of these actions with one single clamp um, and so I think I've come up with that. There are commercial solutions out there that do just that, but of course they cost a lot of money. Mine is a kind of a cost-effective way to do it and you can do it with tools that you have in your own shop. So this is what I came up with. <clears throat> so I guess you could kind of call it like a three-way clamp or something. I just call it a panel clamping system. Um, so as you can see the the calls are integrated um, and then you use these two, this bolt and this nut to apply um, call pressure to flatten the board. And the key is, of this whole system is in this cross-threaded bolt right here. Um, and then so we can use this bolt to apply edge pressure onto the panel to um, make everything tight. So basically this one clamp takes the place of this guy here and this guy here and this guy here. So first I'm going to show you how I built it and then I will do a demonstration at the end of the video. So I start out with this piece of Unistrut that I just picked up at my local Home Depot. You can probably get them for a better price if you buy them from an electrical supply house but this was what I had available to me and so this is what I got. The Unistrut comes in 10 foot sections and here you see me cutting them down to a workable size which in this case is 20 inches a piece. I chose 20 inches because I wasn't sure how well this was going to work and so I did not want to waste a whole lot of material making a bunch of larger clamps. But also these clamps will specialize in narrower panels that I need to glue up, generally something about 16 inches and shorter than that. Most of the hardware I'll be using for this project is half inch bolts and nuts, but I do have one three quarter inch bolt that I will be using and that's that special bolt that will have the perpendicular hole drilled and tapped, but more on that later. Right now I'm using a step bit to expand one of the holes on the Unistrut to accept that three quarter inch bolt. Back to that three quarter inch bolt now. The whole principle of operation of this three way clamp revolves around the manufacture of this bolt. Now I just take a standard three quarter inch grade two bolt and what I'm doing is first I'm finding center, roughly finding it just using the tip of my drill bit and I'm drilling a pilot hole. I follow up that pilot hole with the 27 sixty-fourths hole that is needed to tap a half inch thread.
Now comes time to tap that half inch hole. I start by filing the opening just to make a smooth transition and hopefully to help the tap ease its way in a little bit easier. And then as I'm starting the threads on the tap it becomes apparent that my tap handle is a little too small for the job and so I ended up having to make some cheater bars for my tap handle just to give me the extra leverage that I need. I definitely need to get myself a better tap handle. Uh, this one barely made it through this project and I don't see it lasting much longer beyond that. Now it's time to prepare to do some welding. Now I can see the comments now with all the warnings about welding on Unistrut and other galvanized hardware and zinc poisoning is a very real thing and it's serious and so before you do anything you need to take some precautions. If you can't prepare the metal to remove the zinc coating there are some things that you can do. First off, obviously you're going to be wearing your welding helmet, but under your helmet you can wear a respirator to help filter out some of those fumes. Also, another thing you can do which, which helps greatly is to increase the air circulation in your shop, uh, venting the air to the outside, which I am doing here with this squirrel cage fan. If you use some of these precautions, it'll greatly reduce your chances of getting sick from the zinc fumes when you start welding on zinc plated or galvanized hardware. Okay now that that's out of the way I begin welding on the Unistrut by adding washers to all of the holes that I'm going to um, use and the reason I use washers is just to spread out the load a little bit since these half inch nuts don't have a lot of surface area they're going to want to tend to bend or or kink the webbing of the unistrut and so the washers help spread out the load a little bit after the washers are attached then I attach the nuts to the washers and I'm using nothing but tack welds here because all I want to do is hold this stuff in place it doesn't have to carry the load the welds don't carry the load at all all the welds do are holding the washers and the nuts in place so I don't have to use two wrenches when I am tightening these bolts down when I'm using these clamps. And you will see how that works here in the near future. I need to come up with a good name for this bolt. I can't call it a cross-threaded bolt because that would mean that there's some damage to the threads. But anyhow, now's the time that I attached the bolt to the same apparatus that I attached the nuts and the washers. And this bolt is also going to be tack welded in just like the nuts and the washers. And I orient it to make sure that the cross bolt that goes through it is parallel to the unistrut. And it will become quite apparent soon why I need that to be parallel. Time to clean up these welds and make everything look nice and pretty because as of right now one clamp is completely finished and now I'm going to demonstrate to you exactly how these clamps work. Okay so I start out like this since these are these uh, this panel is only going to be four feet long so it's convenient that my outfit outfeed table is about four feet as well and I start by laying out my clamping system um, this is the uh, the side that has all the welding done to it so it's going to lay down here 
I'm going to take my boards and I lay them out the way I want them. Before I get too far, <clears throat> I do want to protect the edge of my board from these bolts that are sticking out, so I'm going to put a sacrificial strip right here. And I'll, I'll put one on the other side as well once I get to that point. I'm going to go ahead and apply glue to my joint. So I haven't tested this out yet. This is the first time. So it's going to either succeed or fail. And it's being captured on video. There's a pretty significant cup in this board, so this system will, I mean, this test will let me know whether or not the system actually works. So now I grab my top pieces. Whoops. I don't want to forget my other sacrificial strip here. Alright, so now that I've got most of these snugged down, I don't want to clamp them down too hard yet. This one's a little tight. <clears throat> Grab these guys and put them on. Now I'm going to drive these um, screws in to clamp the edges. Alright, I'm doing little by little here, so now I'm going to clamp down on this a little bit more. All done. Now it's ready to sit for a good hour before I take these off and at that point I'll see how we're doing. A good squeeze out on that side but not so much on this, way. this side. I don't know if I put enough glue in there. I'm probably going to have to use um, hardwood for the scrap pieces because uh, the screws just drove directly into that pine. But you can see how they are working here. Those push against that edge and then these vertical bolts are what stops it on the back side. I'm going to have to put some washers on here too so it doesn't warp that unit strut too bad with repeated use. I, I do have a couple washers. That seems to work a lot better. Alright, it's been over an hour so I'm going to go ahead and loosen up these clamps and we'll take a look at this board and see how flat we got it.
Well, sorry everybody, my battery died <clears throat> while I was taking that apart. Um, but I think you got the, the gist of how easy it was to get it apart. I'm going to take you in now close and we're going to take a look and see um, how it did. Alrighty, so um, it did come out pretty flat. Um, there's just maybe just a hair of an overhang. I mean, this is like less than a 64th. It's just perceptible by touch. Um, this one is that's just blue line, maybe just a little bit. But again, um, that's really going to come out with just some light sanding. The bigger issue, I think, and it's something I'm going to have to stay uh, cognizant of when I'm using these clamps is I am um, just ever so slightly denting the wood. These lines are just lines left uh, because the Unistrut's dirty. But here's a good one here where I had this back bolt tightened down a little too far, so when I tightened down this front bolt, um, it dug the Unistrut into the wood. So that's going to take a nice amount of sanding to get out. Luckily with this piece, um, I'm, I actually only need about 14 inches, and so I'm going to actually, I got lucky because I'm going to be able to cut that off. But um, <clears throat> for the most part, it looks pretty good. Um, I might coat the rails of this Unistrut with something just so I don't get this, but it's all going to sand out anyway, so I don't think it'll matter. All right, for those of you that won't be convinced until you see something straight on here, um, you know, here's straight edge. You can kind of see the light coming through if I lift it up, and um, that's about as flat as you can get. Uh, so. For those small ridges, like I said, uh, they'll probably sand out. If not, I got my my plane right here to plane them down. But that's pretty darn good. So yeah, we got some more stock. I got another tabletop to build. That's the reason why I built these. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. I, I put a lot of work into this. You know, I really wanted this video to be a little bit special and kind of inspire you guys so if you make this or even if you're planning on making it go ahead and drop a, a note down in the comments and let me know um, I'd be interested to see, hear how many of you would actually be interested in building something like this and let me know if you think it's worth it um, I it was really a lot of fun to build I don't get to weld that often and you know as you can see I'm not very good at it but um, all the same it was a fun project and um, I have more projects to come. This particular project that I'm building these tables for, I've got another jig i got to build, so I'll have another video out for that. Um, so I hope you guys stick around and watch the rest of my videos. Let's go ahead and subscribe if you like this type of content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.